Welcome to Modern Technology. In this video, we're going to demonstrate our Creel MT and give you some very fine technical details about how the system works. And we'll be starting the demonstration with pushing the mobile Creel into the loading system. And I'll describe the functions of the machine and then give you a PowerPoint presentation during the actual running of the machine. Let's look at the machine. At this point, we position the mobile creel within maybe 25 millimetres of a particular position. And at the floor level, there are clamps which activate and hold the creel rigidly in position. The whole process of Creel MT is to remove an empty core, place the empty core into the magazine of the spindle, to take a wound package from that spindle, position that wound package where we took the empty from, and to blow the yarn through a centre tube up to the top header. And each package of yarn is wound according to the yarn that's on the on the creel of that spindle. And we're actually actually we are measuring the length of the wound yarn very accurately as well. So we'll watch the machine running in the the view on the left hand side of your screen here as I give a presentation about various technical details about Creel MT. With Creel MT, our first approach to this machine is safety and for the safety of our employees and customers, we've put a lot of effort into making this machine as safe as possible to run. So the machine for a start is enclosed totally in a safety cage. Around the machine on the outside, we have safety switches, we have e-stops on the cage and on the winder. We have safety switches on the door and we have a safety reset process if the door is open. And we have a physical lockout on the power and air. Our mobile creel is arranged that the yarn is drawn from the center of the package and blown through to a header. The customer can define the number of positions in this configuration and what you see running in the machine now is 260, but we can go from 200 to 300 positions on this size creel. The empty weight is 600 kilograms. Maximum diameter of packages to go in each position is around 130 millimetres. And, and therefore, with normal yarn you'd use on uh, loop pile, uh, tufted, 10th gauge, our maximum weight per position is about 1,000 grams. Something very special about our system is the cores remain with the creel. So when we, uh, and they're plastic cores, <clears throat> and our system is a closed system then. So we don't add empty cores to the system. Our mobile creels are returned to the system. We extract the empty cores. They become the cores that we actually wind onto. The center pin details, there's a ceramic at the front, a shroud to blow through, and it makes... Uh, and also makes uh, a reliable system with this shroud around each package position in that the yarn does not drape down to packages below it and there's no chance of tangling from package to package. So the, the shrouds are glass filled, nylon, anti-static and the package holder <clears throat> is in the center position. There's a view there of a tube and the package holder without the shroud. There's a slot at the back of the shroud and that actually allows us to place a mechanism in here, which we call a yarn finger at the back of the package to hold the yarn in position as we blow through, <clears throat> which I'll explain in a little while later. Let's go back to the machine for a while.
Our mobile creel has header strips at the top. Yarn is blown through these header strips. That is how we are able to beam splice onto the yarn which is existing being fed into the, into the tufting machine. We have three header strips here. Each one is removable. And at the very top of our mobile creel, we have a yarn catcher. Its purpose is to prevent yarn which would be blown through our header strips from draping down into positions we have to access. There's also brushes in here that prevent yarn running back. Once it's blown through, prevents yarn running back to the creel position. So as you saw, our mobile creel is pushed into our loading area with guide rails. We've got various ways that we can push this in. The, the mobile creel is on casters. We can use a pallet or we could use an electric pallet trolley as well. As I described before, once the creel is in position, we have uh, locks here which actually align the creel rigidly and accurately in position. At the end of the run, we expect that we'll have one or two percent of wastage remaining in our mobile creels. This is how we extract them. We have a, a manual system of winding the yarn, the 250 ends all at once to take the last one or two percent out of the mobile creel. I'll describe the features of our robot head. The first important part is our camera. Our camera is actually used, used to align our robot to the individual creel pin positions every time we use the system. We have a reference position, and if we find that the pin position detected by the camera is more than five or six millimeters out, we actually regard that as a alarm condition and we stop. Something has happened to bend the pin. We have a laser here, which is looking at a reflector, and it's looking at the ballooning of the yarn as the yarn is being blown into the system. We'll go back and view the whole system. We'll view the whole system from a close view, and I'll explain the ballooning. So again, extract the empty, put the empty position here, pick up the wound package, hold on to the end, transfer position, right here is the ballooning of the yarn, we actually detect and measure that, the ballooning of the yarn, we account that, if the ballooning of the yarn does not occur, we regard that as an error condition. Another very important part of this is our yarn tail grabber. This actually holds the yarn when we're picking it off the winder and allows us to control it for the transfer and blowing into the center of the tube. The yarn finger is used for holding the end of the yarn as we blow it through. I'll describe that further in just a minute. Package chuck is a parallel jaw chuck which opens on the inside of the package to extract the empty one and to position the full one. And an air nozzle here is what we use to blow the yarn through to the center pin. So here is an empty package uh, empty core removed from the creel. Here's a wound package. And a, and a very important feature of what we do is winding, putting center winds in this position here. So the purpose of these center winds is that we actually, we hold the yarn here and we lower the, the finger at this point. When we blow the yarn through the center, now that this is shown outside because this all happens inside the shroud, it's not visible. But when we blow the yarn, it unwinds the yarn on the package to this point, to the point where the yarn finger is holding the yarn. We blow the yarn through, the yarn is tight. Then we release the finger and extract the robot head. So in this way, we can accurately control how much yarn is blown through the tubes to the header. I'll describe the winder now. We use a Gilboss winder manufactured, manufactured for Modra, and it's actually a three stack of Gilboss's uni winder. And the uni winder is a system that they've had great success with in, in various configurations. And uh, we use it with a hysteresis wheel, which gives us an accuracy of plus or minus half a percent, or 
from zero to 1.5 metres. We've added some mechanisms to the winder in that after the package is complete and doffed, we don't cut the yarn, we lift the yarn and clamp it. And then we hold the yarn here, ready for our yarn grabber to come in and grab the yarn at this position before we cut the yarn at the, at the winder. Here's the view from the robot, an area here where he picks up the yarn, empty core goes into this position. Let's go back to the top view and I'll, I'll describe how this works. So the next position that the robot attends to will be the top position, and that's an ideal position to describe and take note of the details of the pickup of the yarn at the top winder. Empty core extracted, transfer to the top. As the empties in there, the spindle starts winding. Here we grab the yarn, hold the yarn. The yarn is then cut. Then we grab the center transfer the whole package back to the position we removed the empty from, blow through to the front header with a metered amount of yarn. The frame. We spent a lot of effort making a very rigid frame. It's heavily braced and the top rail for the robot actually is part of as a structural part of our frame as well. And on this system, our one robot three spindle system, we have one rail. In a two robot or four robot system, we actually have a duplicate rail in this position. So we actually have a robot or robots working on each side of the loading area. Now, the, the whole purpose of our frame is to hold and the robot and allow the robot to move around rigidly between spindle positions and between creel positions. And, and really you can regard it as a robot in itself in its transport in the x direction the y direction rotation and z direction so we actually have a very compact robot in here for what it does our frame is very rigid we use servo motors with absolute encoders a very rugged rack and pinion system with uh, auto lubrication and um, we're very pleased with this system its rigidity and accuracy gives us what we need to do this task We'll go back to the machine and watch it some more. If you watch carefully, you see the finger goes into the gap above the shroud. The finger is also used to push the empty core into the magazine. We have to have a way to know where the position of the needles on the tufting machine, how that corresponds to positions in our mobile creels. And for that, we've, we have a system and we've developed a system called Creel Map. And the Creel Map allocates and directs needle positions to header locations to creel positions. And remembering that this may go on to either side of the system. So, and we actually have names for the operators. We have um, names for the location of the pins and the sides. What we've done is develop a Excel file and the Excel file describes your needle positions on your tufting machine to your header locations. So it's as simple as this. Modra specifies the header and the side and the locations by the way we assemble our mobile creels. The job of the customer is to, to connect the needles to the headers. This makes our creel map, being an Excel file, a very flexible file and allows mobile creels to be configured to suit a wide range of applications. For example, 
You could use it for a 10th gauge single bar machine or a 12th gauge double sliding needle bar machine um, if the thread ups between the headers and the needles are different. We, we strive to give you flexibility. Another thing we're, we've worked on and we're very pleased with is our user interface on our winder creel. What we have is a uh, indicators on our winder creel to uh, show uh, the, we show, we indicate actually on the, these buttons just here. We'll indicate, we'll indicate when the winder has to be changed and we have a display in this situation, there's five colors here. Um, and these bands here match the, match the positions of, on the spindles. So uh, on the left-hand side, we're actually looking at the live indication here. We'll look at that full screen. And um, the top spindle here, I see has 20 packages to go, and it's all color A. The middle spindle has 20 packages to go. It's all spindle C. And the, and the, the lowermost position has four to go, and this shows me that after four more packages on, on the lower position, we have to make a change from colour B to colour D. So in this way, we've got a really simple user interface. We, uh, we have a flashing light there that indicates the change and the colour screen above, this, uh, above where the, the colour screen above the uh, spindle locations, the creel locations, indicates to the operator what the order is and what the next change is to be. And for our demonstration, we just have an area where we have A, B, C, D, E, F, but uh, users will have pallets or creels or boxes containing their yarn. Uh, we don't really need to know or want to know your yarn spec. We just need to know A, B, C, D, E, F, for example. So the workflow for our system. Uh, the yarn data is another approach, another simple approach is we use Excel as the file that actually explains the yarn data. All we need to know is your needle position, the thread up and the total length at that position. That's all we need. Uh, the creel map then adjusts where those needle locations are physically to our mobile creels. We allocate needles to mobile creels. Generally, there'll be uh, four creels probably to a two meter wide machine. And then our software develops the user interface at the winder from that from the Excel file of the needles and the thread up and from our creel map, we generate the user interface there. We'll go back to the machine for a bit. So in summary, we've developed a new approach to creels in particular for, uh, for creels for tufted carpet. We've shown how we can save labor and materials and we can, this system will have, have particular application to short runs as well. So if you want further information, have a look at our website. There's more information on Creel MT there or send us an email to sales at modra.com.